Good morning, everybody. Now, there's been a second assassination attempt on President Trump, the second in just over two months. And, uh, you know, thank God that nothing happened to him again this second time, as in the first time. Um, there's a lot of information already about the incident and about the suspect in the assassination attempt. Obviously, if you probably read the papers and seen the news already that this happened on uh, President Trump's own golf course in Palm Beach in Florida. And it seems that the Secret Service or his own security detail did their jobs because they went ahead of him. He was playing a round of golf and the security guys went ahead of him, uh, a hole ahead, and found this man uh, lying in the bushes with a rifle, with a GoPro, I guess to film uh, what he was uh, attempting to do, shot at him uh, as soon as the the people where President Trump was behind on the golf course heard the shots. Um, they covered him, uh, got him to the ground to protect him and then put him inside his uh, bulletproof um, buggy and then drove him to safety. Uh, but the shooter ran away. Uh, there was a car waiting. He uh, got into his car but left his rifle behind and uh, drove nearly 40 miles. They said 38 miles until he was apprehended by police. But they had the details of the car and the registration number because the security service at the golf course found it, um, sort of found the car and took a, uh, a photo and uh, noted the number plate. So all that is information that is there uh, in the public domain. Obviously, it's early days. So some of that may, you know, change uh, as time goes on. But that seems to be pretty solid fact. Um, and uh, he's been arrested. The guy's name is Ryan Ralph. Now, interestingly about this assassination attempt and others is there's an awful lot of information about him which uh, and interviews and and ex posts and uh, uh, he was even in a promotional video for something I'll talk about that in a minute uh, which they tried to scrub from the internet uh, it, everything about him on YouTube has been deleted uh, his ex uh, account has been deleted um, and but people have uh, captured the information and have, have been sharing it so everyone can actually see um, everything that he's done. Uh, up to this point and publicly and uh, that has been put out online and he actually was someone who did an interview with Newsweek big MSM publication uh, in 2022 in Romania and the the purpose of that or the main point of that interview is that he is a fanatical supporter of Ukraine and the war effort in Ukraine, which is against Russia, so much so that he actually says in the interview that he thinks he's on the side of good fighting evil. This is a 100% black and white issue. Ukraine good, Russia bad. And he actually was... Uh, encouraging people to go to Ukraine to fight and join the Ukrainian uh, army, uh, militias, armed forces there to fight against Russia and uh, actually appeared also in a promotional video for the Azov Battalion. Um, I think that was back in 2020. Um, so Obviously, the Azov Battalion are a real neo-Nazi brigade. You know, they wear swastikas and they wear, you know, the black suns of the, the you know, Nazism on their uh, regalia, on their uniforms and so on. So he's obviously in with them, but somehow he thinks that that's good and Russia bad, Putin bad, which is the line that we're getting from all of the mainstream media and have been since the beginning of um, the conflict, the special military operation, as it was then uh, in February 2022. Um, obviously, before then, <laughs> the mainstream media were saying, oh, Ukraine has got a white supremacist problem. There's all these Nazis there. They're bad. But as soon as the conflict started, it's like, oh, well, they're not really that bad. Um, they're good national socialists rather than bad ones. And that's the line that uh, the media has been taken very, very bizarrely. Uh, I think most people can see through that. But obviously, this person here didn't. 
and he's like a typical far leftist who thinks that they're on the side of good and then they will get a rifle and try to put a bullet through somebody's head. Uh, you know, in this case, President Trump and wanting to take him out. And, you know, you, you obviously got to uh, question the link there. Is this because um, Trump says that he will end the war in Ukraine within 24 hours? That's what he said he can do. And I'm sure he can um, call up President Putin and they can stop the conflict from happen, happening and going any further. And that will be a very good thing because no more people will die, whether it's Russian soldiers or Ukrainian soldiers. And now you see these horrible pictures coming from Ukraine of um, the armed forces, the press gangs going round and getting innocent young men to, you know, forcing them to go into buses and then bundling them into cars, taking them off to the front line. These people have got no military experience whatsoever, but they're taken to the front line, forced to fight. They can't fight because they don't know how, because they're not trained as soldiers. They don't want to be soldiers. They just want to be plumbers or teachers or doctors or whatever. Um, I even hear now one one report I heard is that the Zelensky regime is is closing down the churches, which is absolutely dreadful, appalling, anti-Christian act uh, or many, many acts going on there. And they're forcing the priests and the abbots, uh, Christian ministers to go and you know up to the front line and to fight. Well, they're not they don't, they don't know how to fight. They're not going to be able to fight. They're just going to get massacred. Um, they're going to be put in the front line and massacred. This is obviously uh, just appalling. And, um, you, you know, it's essentially uh, indirect murder, mass murder to uh, the Ukrainian people who don't want to go and fight and can't fight because they've never um, fought anything and don't have any military training. And you've got this guy here, you know, who tried to assassinate President Trump and he's supporting this kind of regime uh, in Ukraine. But the other thing to say about this guy is, has he been completely brainwashed into believing this by some kind of military program like MK Ultra? Because there was an interview with the police officer who arrested him, apprehended him in his car as he was fleeing from the assassination attempt scene uh, later on. And he said, look, he showed no emotion. It was like, you know, dead, uh, you know, emotionless. And that's you know, some kind of sign that there's some brainwashing going on. And, you know, when he thinks that he's a good man um, for trying to blow someone's brains out, you know, uh, you know, to, to think that either you really are evil and you are completely, uh, you know, I I deliberately inverting the situation or you actually genuinely believe that you are good, even though you're doing evil, your whole mind has been inverted, not from yourself, but from someone outside brainwashing you. And, you know, the security services around the world, the CIA, others here in the UK, uh, obviously have got the ability to brainwash people through uh, trauma bonding and other things. And obviously, uh, it's a very different um, topic, but we've seen that en masse during the COVID era, uh, where you've got behavioural psychology units, nudge units, uh, and they are using military-grade techniques in order to brainwash people, which is how they got 90% uh, of people in the country to lock down and stay at home and to put on a mask, even <laughs> wear a mask, even though everybody knew <laughs> beforehand, and even people were saying through it that masks don't, uh, stop transmission of this um, virus, you know, which I don't think there was one because it was actually flu and you know, flu went right down in that year and COVID went up and so on. Yeah, anyway, that's a whole other situation. And also they got um, 50 million people in the UK to take an injection of an experimental subject substance that had not been properly safety tested uh, and uh, just uh, completely ignored every safety protocol that we've known that we need to put in place for new medicines since the thalidomide um, 
scandal or tragedy, whatever you like to call it, uh, where 10,000 babies were born with birth defects and, and they stopped it and then said, well, from now on, anything that goes onto the market that is a medicine or anything needs at least eight to 10 years of full rigorous safety testing. You know, people were traumatized back in 2020, 2021, in order to get them to take an injection. And, and as I say, 50 million people in the UK, that's took this that that's you know um 90 percent also of the adult population and in america 200 million people plus took this injection completely unnecessarily so you see mk ultra to bring it back to the original topic with this this uh, suspect ryan ralph uh trying to assassinate president trump was he a, a low an evil lone wolf or was he someone who has been brainwashed and mind melded by uh, an agency that has been used some techniques on him to get him to actually believe that this is a good thing to do and uh, and manipulated his mind you see mk ultra is not a conspiracy theory it's an actual fact where there's all the documents um to show that this was used you know back from the 1950s and and if they could brainwash individuals successfully in the 1950s, heaven knows what they can do now, 70 years on, where these techniques have been developed and refined and built on and and added to and uh, and made more powerful. Um, so you know there is this question as well as whether you know he's a lone wolf or whether he is uh, you know an agent of some. Uh, deep state agency or he's been brainwashed into being uh, an, an, an idiot patsy who's going to do some dreadful dreadful thing I don't know these are all questions which are circulating around already about you know who is this guy what is he doing why did he do it um, and, and you know is he acting on his own or is there somebody else uh, controlling him or is he actually an agent himself we don't know that yet at all that's all just speculation um but uh thank goodness that he wasn't successful that in this case the security services did their job unlike the first assassination attempt where um there were definitely two shooters at least because the forensic analysis of the the echo of the bullets shows that there were differently two different sounds at least and two different um acoustic patterns coming from uh the different shots the first two were different to the last five and then there's potentially another one later on which was it was different as well so possibly there were three different shooters at that event in uh butler pennsylvania the first assassination attempt which actually you know one of the bullets actually grazed uh, President Trump's ear and then someone in the crowd was uh, killed, murdered by one of the shooters there. Uh, thank goodness that no one was injured here, uh, except perhaps the uh, the suspects, you know, obviously the security services shot at him. Uh, whether they actually hit him, wounded him or not, I don't know. Obviously, he could get into his car and drive away, uh, but was later apprehended. So that's good. So um, he's he's been he's, he's alive and he can be questioned and people can find out a lot more about uh, what was going on here, why he did it, uh, and uh, who he's working for, and, um, and, and look into the situation in a lot more detail. And hopefully there will not be another assassination attempt. Although, you know, uh, the deep state has got its agendas. They've got their money invested in Ukraine. They want, this, they want to take over. Uh, the whole of the land of Ukraine, but not because they care about Ukrainians, but because uh, the, the the banks and the hedge funds, BlackRock, JP Morgan, want that land and those mineral resources to pillage it for themselves. And they also want to go into parts of Russia and take the, the oil resources which are there, you know, into, further into the south of Russia. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, very, very valuable 
um, oil fields and gas fields there. They want, you know, some of these people are crazy enough. They actually genuinely believe that they can uh, affect regime change in Russia and then take it over, uh, put one of their people in, whether it's Navalny, obviously, is not alive anymore, or Kordakovsky, or one of these people, and uh, and then can can slice and dice up Russia and take its mineral resources. So that's not going to happen. Um, and so, you know, the best thing for, for humanity is that we bring this conflict to an end uh, so that it doesn't escalate to World War Three, and um, you know the, the mindset of this this person Ryan Ralph is, is very much the mindset of a completely useful idiot who's swallowed the deep state cabal's lies over Ukraine hook line and sinker, and believes that you know that, that we're fighting for good when actually uh, that the inverse is true. And um, it's all the evil cabal that wants this uh, conflict to continue and uh, be because they want to um, serve themselves to whatever resources they can get out of there. It doesn't matter how many Ukrainians die in the process. They don't care about them. So let's hope President Trump wins in the election and can stop this war in 24 hours, like he said he would do, which would be the best thing for Ukraine, Russia, Europe, and the world. Thanks for listening, everybody. God bless you all.